Hello guys, uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives. Uh, we are still working on our science N2 and this is work, uh, power and efficiency. Uh, we are going to have other questions as usual, but uh, I just want to take advantage of this paper that we had. Uh, that we or that we just wrote this paper recently. So this is uh, November 2023 exam. So we are given on question number three, uh, question number four, which is uh, work, power, and efficiency. All right, 4.1, define talkie in this first, uh, in this question, that is our uh, first part of the question to define what is referred to as what? As talkie. All right, uh, remember, as long as you talk about the talkie, you are supposed to be thinking of the turning force, right? Once we once we talk about this, you're supposed to be thinking about of a force that is supposed to 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 to, to cause a rotation somewhere, all right? So we can simply say that uh, this is as the force, uh, or is the turning force. You can also refer to as the turning force, or just the force uh, that causes uh, that causes a rotation, a rotation uh, around a turning point. All right, that causes a rotation around a turning point. All right, around a turning point. So that's the idea then. Okay, so uh, it was just direct one mark for that. And 4.2, we are given that uh, we've got a truck in this case with a mass of, uh, uh, we're given this in, uh, in tons, that is a mass of one ton, right? So that is one ton travels at, at a constant velocity of 54 kilometers per hour up an incline of 20 degrees with horizontal. All right, so this is going up an incline. So uh, this one, we also talked about this. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, whenever you're given this type of a question, uh, remember, all you just need is to know your diagram. Uh, you're gonna have something of this nature. It is going up the incline. Take note, uh, this is going where? Uh, up, up. It is going up of the incline. That is the, 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 the question there. At the 54 kilometers per hour with the mass of one ton. So remember, one ton is equal to 1,000 uh, kilograms. All right, so this is our object here. So initially, this object is going up. So meaning to say it is going to be opposed down here. All right, it is going, going to be opposed with uh, the frictional force, but we are not given that, all right? In this case, if you take a closer look, we are not given that, and we are even told here uh, to neglect, friction is neglected. So meaning to say we are only going to be opposed on the other side with the parallel component, in this case, which is our FS, uh, this is our FT, which is equal to F up, as it is going what? as it is going up, right? Uh, with the angle that we are given, remember we are given the angle of 20 degrees, which is the one that you're gonna see here, all right? Remember, this will be your weight, uh, and we've got the perpendicular uh, component and also the parallel component. So this is your perpendicular component. You can write this as FC or F perpendicular like this, or you can just write as FC, right? So I'm just gonna write FC. Uh, right, and this is our FS, which is the same uh, as this one, and this is our W, remember W is equal to mg, and the angle of 20 here is the same as the angle of 20 here, okay, that's it, uh, this is our body here with the mass of what, 1000, so the question was uh, 4.21, we asked here to calculate the following, the force to be developed, take note, to be developed by the engine, so meaning the force for it to go up was it is going up, it is taking this up and the loss, uh, the friction is not considered. So meaning to say, we are talking about the total force, which is F, uh, F up. So that's 4.21. So FT, uh, the force for it to go up uh, is equal to the one opposing on the other side. Uh, if there was a friction component, we're going to add it, but we do not have that. So it's neglected. So it's just going to be equal to FS. And we know that this Fs is the parallel component, which is given as W sine theta, uh, the perpendicular component, W cos theta, okay? So that means here we have got Fs for the 
parallel component, which is W, the sine of theta, where W represents the mass times the gravitational acceleration, right? That is our W in this case, the weight component, the weight, the weight, all right? So that is the mass of the object, which is 1,000 kilograms times the gravitational acceleration of 9,8 times the sine of theta, the sine of the angle that we're given there, which is what? Uh, 20 degrees. So that was going to give us uh, the required force, which is for this object to go up, uh, which is going to be 3,351,79, uh, 74, something like that, 797405, something like that, right? You can just write as 3, 3, 5, 1, uh, nine seven. All right, it's just gonna be seven nine seven to three decimal places in what in uh, newtons. Okay, so that was it uh, on this part. Four point two two. We are now given here to calculate the work done uh, by the force in eight seconds. The work done by the force in eight seconds. All right. Do we need work done when we are calculating? Uh, do we need work done? Actually, do we need like uh time? when you're calculating the work done. All right, let's see. Because work done is given as uh, the 4 point, remember 4.22, we are given that the time there is eight seconds and you are supposed to calculate the work done. Why is that so? Okay, work done is equal to the force times the distance taken. That's what we know. Force times dis distance, which is um, uh, work done. That's force times the distance taken. And... In this case, we are asking ourselves like, um, but this information is not complete. Do we have the distance taken, the displacement? Okay, if we check properly, what we are given here is initially, we have got the speed. If we check a closer look, the velocity, it is moving at a constant, constant, constant. The velocity there is the same, 54 kilometers per hour. So as it moves, with the constant velocity of 54 kilometers per hour. All right, 54 kilometers per hour. Remember, we can, we can change this to meters per second since one meter per second is equal to 3,6 uh, kilometers per hour. We're just going to divide this by 3,6. Uh, that will be velocity in meters per second, which is going to give us 15 meters per second. All right. Knowing this, that we have the time that was taken and the velocity is constant and we want the displacement. If the velocity is constant, I want you to take it back to your, uh, to your normal uh, dynamics. Let's go to your auto back to our dynamics like this. We want to know how the velocity graph is going to be like. This is your velocity. This is your time. So the velocity is constant, meaning to say it is the object is moving like this. Yes, it's, it's going up the incline, which is true. It's going up the incline like this. This is the going up of the incline. But as it is going up, the velocity there is constant. Is this is the same, even though it's going up of the, in, uh, the, the incline. So as it is going up, this is the velocity time graph, not that one for the incline, but a normal velocity time. Remember, velocity versus time. So it means it is at a velocity of 15 meters per second and is constant. Right, remember our velocity in meters per second, our time in seconds. So this is the time that we have at this point. And this represents what? The displacement. Remember, displacement is what the distance. That is the displacement. So in order for us to know the displacement, the distance that was taken, we calculate by area under the graph. But we're not supposed to do this on it or to have a diagram. Whenever they, they talk about having a constant velocity, what you simply need to know is that the displacement S is simply velocity times time. That's it. That's the idea. Velocity times time. Of which you could have calculated from the area because we know that the displacement is equal to area under the graph. So you're going to multiply for the area. Uh, this is going to be 15. Uh, this is going to be 8. We get what? Uh, we, got, uh, we get our displacement, which is uh, 120 meters. That is the height the distance taken, that is the one that we want. Then. Or from this one, like I said, if you know that, or if you are given 
uh, the velocity and the, the time provided that the velocity is constant, like what we are given, it follows that the displacement is simply velocity times time. The velocity we are given as 15 meters per second times the time in seconds, it gives us displacement in what? Uh, uh, in what in meters so you multiply 15 times 8 which is the same as this one is going to be 120 meters so that's the displacement that we need here to calculate our work done that is the force times the distance we have got the force isn't it the force we are given uh we calculated uh the force because this is the take note which one are they talking about uh the work done by the force which is the one that we calculated before so and this Force is given here. We calculated our force. Yes, it's just a substitution. Um, that is uh, three three five one comma seven nine seven times the displacement force times distance. That is force times displacement, which is the distance of what one hundred twenty meters. All right. So that's the idea. That you multiply. We are going to obtain a work done in this case in joules. So that's force for. Uh, this is supposed to be 402,215,64 joules like that. You can convert to kilojoules. If we divide by 1,000, that will be 402,216. The 5 is the 6 is going to change the 5. So that will be a 6 here in what? In kilojoules. That's what if you want to write it in what? In kilojoules. You're going to have it that way. Well, I have it this way, or you can just have it as it was before. Okay, so that was the idea there on the work done. All right, the work done is simply uh, uh, taken from the force times the displacement, force times distance. Then the power developed in kilowatts. So in order for us to have the power, we are simply taking from the work done. We have got the time already. Uh, and we know that power is equivalent to the work done over the time taken. That is our power. So we've got everything in this case. So since we want this in um, uh, in a kilowatts, right? So that's 4.23. So power is equal to the work done over the time taken. So this is already in kilojoules. Remember, work uh, power is simply, if it is kilowatt, it's kilojoules per second. That is is equivalent to a kilowatt joule per second that is equivalent to a watt all right one joule per second that's a watt one kilo joule per second that's a one kilowatt so since the answer is needed in kilowatts i'm just going to take my answer the one that is already in what in kilojoules so that i obtain kilojoules per second yes you can use this one in joules but i'm not saying it's wrong all right so i'm just going to take this one that's four zero two comma two one six which is already in what? In kilojoules over the time in seconds because we are supposed to obtain what? Kilojoules per second. So if we take this, we are going to obtain uh, 50, 277 like that, 277, which is in kilojoules per second. And we understand that kilojoules per second means what? Means kilowatt. So it's already, our answer is already in what? In kilowatts. So like I said, yes, you can go back to these joules. You find your answer in joules per second, which is in watts. Then after that, you change that answer from uh, where it was by dividing by a thousand to give us the answer in what? In kilowatts, because the answer is needed in what? In kilowatts. That's the idea there. So, or we could have, uh, guys, we, we remember here we've got the total force and we have the velocity also. So instead of using this formula work done over the time taken, why can't we use the total force? Why can't we do that? All right, so we can do this. The power is equal to the total force times the velocity. So instead of taking that velocity, calculate displacement. If you know this formula, just use it because we have got the total force. This is our total force, the one that we calculated, the one what said, it said equal to Fs. So the total force is already there. So our total force, uh, which is in this case, our total force is given as three, uh, this one, that was three, three, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. All right. Uh, this one is the rounded off. All right, so I'm just going to take the rounded off value, three, three, five, one, comma, seven, nine, seven. This is the total force times the velocity. And this velocity must be in meters 
per second. So we have the velocity. Uh, remember, I okay, I, uh, there was our velocity, it was what? 54 kilometers per hour. And remember, we converted that 54 kilometers per hour and we got 15 meters per second, if you still remember. So we are just taking the answer that we had already or in meters per second. So that is going to give us the power. So, right, so if you multiply this, we are going to obtain the power, which is going to be 50,276,955 watts, all right? So to convert to kilowatts, because the power is needed in kilowatts, we're gonna divide by 1,000, by 1,000, that's 50, comma 276. So this will change into seven. So it's gonna be 277. I showed you guys how also you can be able to convert this on your calculator. Uh, you can change that to three decimal places. Your calculator can calculate everything to three decimal places. That is how you could have calculated the power. That's another way. So you could have used this way. As you can see, you're obtaining the same answer. So it's up to you guys which method or which formula is easier according to the information that you are given. All right, so that was uh, 4.2, which needed this diagram. Okay, so if we check here, uh, 4.3, we are now given uh, the turning force, all right? So there, uh, let's see what you're given properly. All right, so this is it here. We're given that the turning force applied to a flywheel is, so we're given this as 1,000, uh, 650 Newton. Uh, the diameter of the flywheel is 350 millimeters. So there we are given the diameter, uh, 350 millimeters. Convert this to meters, we're gonna divide by a thousand or multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative three. That will be 0 0.35 in meters, the diameter in meters. But this should be given or when calculating whatever that we need, and whenever we talk about the turning force, we think about what? We think about the torque because it's, we had this on our definition. Remember when we defined uh, torque here, we said uh, that's the turning force, which is the force that causes a rotation, all right? So meaning to say, whenever we, we are given about a turning force, we think about what? The torque. And we said uh, the torque is given as the force times the perpendicular distance, which is the radius, force times radius, all right? The perpendicular distance from the center, which is from the, from the center, which is from the center to the, to the circular part, it is the radius that you consider there, all right? You consider the radius from the center, the distance from the center. So that means when I have the force, 1,650 times the radius, remember radius is diameter over two, Diameter is two times radius. So if you want to find the radius, you divide by two. So that's the diameter in meters, uh, 0 0.35 over two. To have what? To have the radius, all right? So that is going to give us the torque in this case. And torque, uh, from this calculation, it was going to give you, uh, this is 1650 times, this one as a decimal, uh, that's 0 0.175, that's our radius. So if you multiply, you're going to get 288,75, 288,75 uh, Newton meter, 288,75 Newton meter. So these are the typical questions. You just have to be careful how the questions are given and how are you supposed to attempt the typical question. As you can see, uh, it was a nice question to consider uh, as part of revisions. And for those who wrote, and I think we managed to write this question properly uh, because I think everything is was fine. Maybe someone could just have a confusion here, but uh, for the power, but uh, this question was fine. Okay, let's hope for more to come uh, from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.